Hello guys, today I am discussing about hypothesis test for one population mean when sigma is known. I think that all of you know what is sigma. Sigma is standard deviation. We can call this hypothesis testing is the one mean z test or simply z test. To perform z test, we need some assumptions. Here there are here there are three assumptions first assumption is simple random sample second assumption is normal population or large sample third assumption is sigma is known moreover the one mean g test consists of some steps first step the we need to state the null hypothesis and alternate hypo, alternative hypothesis the null hypothesis we denote in here is not when mu equals to mu naught so it is noted that mu naught is some number and the alternate hypothesis is here is h a there are three conditions if mu does not equal to mu naught this is called two-tailed if mu less than mu naught, this is called left tail, left tailed. If mu greater than mu naught, this is called two. This is called right tailed. We're gonna say step two. We need to take the decision over the significance level, and we denote significance level as alpha. For example. If we have significance level 5%, so we can we can say alpha equals to 0 0.05, and we're gonna say step three. We need to compute the value of the test statistic by this formula, which is shown on screen, and in here we need the value of x bar. And we need the value of mu naught. We need to have sigma, and finally we need to have the sample size. And we can denote the value z naught. Now we're gonna see the critical value approach. Step four: the critical values are plus minus z alpha over 2 this is called two tailed and another critical value is negative g alpha this is called left tailed and another one is positive g alpha this is called right tailed okay now we can use table in the textbook to find the critical values because we need we need to know the critical values here yeah, first figure gives the illustration of two tailed second figure gives some il illustration of the left tailed third figure gave gives illustration of right tailed now we're gonna see step five this is related the rejection of null hypothesis or do not rejection of the null hypothesis if the value of the t statistic falls in the rejection region, then we can reject null hypothesis or H naught. Otherwise, we do not reject null hypothesis. Now we can see p value approach. And in our textbook, there is a table by which we can obtain p value. And the first figure tells about two tailed for p values, second figure about left tailed, third figure is about right tailed. Now let's say step 5 if obtained value of p less than or equal equals to alpha or less than or equals to significance level then we can reject a is not otherwise 
we do not reject each node or null hypothesis. Now we can see step six. We need to interpret the results from both hypothesis test. Both hypothesis test means critical value approach and p value approach. Now it is noted that the hypothesis test is exact for normal population, but it is approximately correct for large samples whenever populations are non-normal. Now let's see the key fact. It is important to keep in mind and it is related when we can use one mean g test. There are some guidelines of using one mean g test for first one for small samples for example sample size is less than 15 then we can use the test only when the variable which are under consideration is normally distributed or very close to normal distribution second point if we have moderate size some moderate size of the samples for example 15 to 30 we can use also z test if the data does not contain outliers or variable which are under consideration is not far from being normal normally distributed third point is for large samples for example it can be 30 or more than 30 we can use z test without restrictions but if outliers are present their removal is not justified no we perform the hypothesis test once with considering outliers and once without considering outliers and we need to see what kind of effect the outliers have if the conclusion is affected and we can use different procedure or we can take another sample if it is possible. Now let's see four. If outliers are present but their removal is justified and results in a data set for which the G test is appropriate. So then we can use the test. Now next slide we are going to see some examples. This example is property and dietary calcium. This example is related of 18 adults. Their incomes below the poverty line. And we need to compute the mean calcium intake of all adults. So in here some data are already given. So in next slide, we are going to see trouble. This table is daily calcium intake of 18 adults. So here our sample size is 18. So we can say that n equals to 18. According to the quotient, sigma equals to 180 and mu naught equals to 1000 and this example also considered significance level 5%. So alpha equals to 0 0.05. So by using this data and follow the steps from 1 to 6 we can compute the mean calcium intake for 18 adults now next go to the slide another slide this this is also an example of one mean z test this is related about clocking the zeta in here significance level and standard deviation also in also mentioned and the next slide we are going to see the table this table is the about 35 seaters 
and it is about top speeds in which in which miles per hour so we can say that the n equals to 35 the sample size and sigma equals to 3.2 mile per hour mu naught equals to 60 mile per hour according to the example and this example we also considered significance level is 5% so alpha equals to 0 0.05 and we can compute x bar from this table so using these data and following the steps from 1 to 6 we can compute we can cal calculate the mean of mean of top speed of all cetals thank you everyone